Heather Gay is getting sued by Monica Garcia. This is a Salt Lake City feud I did not see coming. Bethany Frankel is getting dragged in a new article about her reality reckoning by NBC. And yes, we have new episodes of Beverly Hills and Salt Lake City that I'll give a little recap for at the end. I hope you're ready for it. Grab some coffee and let's get it. Oh, hi, it's me, Zach Peter. Pop culture junkie. Reality TV insider. Published author and host of the No Filter with Zach Peter podcast. Here I'll bring you all the latest news on The Real Housewives, deep dives into celebrity legal scandals, and unfiltered combos with your favorite stars. I've got you covered. And yes, I always keep receipts. So be sure to hit that like button and subscribe for all the latest tea. Now, let's dive in. Hello, 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 hello. Welcome on in, welcome on in, welcome on in, everybody in the club. Okay, so we have a lot to break down today. Bethany Frankel getting dragged. I think I want to start with that, um, which would be fun. Just a reminder, sorry there was no Salt Lake City recap uh, this week, guys, on YouTube. Josh is in uh, New York having martinis with martinis with Eddie, who I saw um when I was in Vegas over the weekend. So Josh was out living his best, uh, uh, I was going to say Vegas, best New York life. So I figured I would give you my thoughts of Salt Lake City on the main feed today. So I'll drop my thoughts about this week's episode because it was actually really good. I was living for the Lisa Barlow versus Monica of it all, but now we have Heather Gay versus Monica. And I'll give you a little tea on like what I've heard about the new season and why the cast seems to be isolated from Monica. Uh, we'll talk about Beverly Hills, Beverly Hills, Beverly Thrills. I don't know why I want to go back to Vegas and now I want to go to Magic Mike. I'm like, oh, I'm not normally into like that kind of stuff. I'm like, lick some whipped cream off of my titties. I'm here for it. Uh, okay, but let's start with Bethany because I'm living for the shade that is being thrown at her. So obviously we know she has her reality reckoning, right? She interviewed Denise Richards, which <sighs> I know I said I was going to listen to it, but I just don't care, you know? I just, I don't care. I'm interested in Denise's story, right? I'm interested in Denise's like marriage to Charlie Sheen. I'm not interested in Bethany though. So for that reason, I'm out sharks. I'm not going to listen to it because I just don't, again, don't, I don't give a fuck about Bethany Frankel, but neither does NBC because they don't seem to be worried. So she did her Vanity Fair expose, which was garbage trash. Poor Vanity Fair, RIP. Their journalistic credibility is going down the drain. But now Frances Berwick, who's an NBC executive, she just did a post BravoCon interview with Variety. And she's talking all about BravoCon. I mean, she did give a few other like tidbits of, um, of tea, I guess. She, what else did she say? She, they said that they're not doing any new housewife shows, that they're not, or not any new like cities. They're not looking to bring it anywhere else, which I am happy that they finally acknowledge that because I feel like we have so many housewife shows as it is. Like we don't need to add any more new cities. People always ask me like, when do you think the new city should be? What do you think, you know, people should want from like, what new city would you like to see some women? I'm always like, no, I don't, I don't need any more housewife cities. We have so much and we're so over overdone on content right now that I'm like trying to just keep up with it. I haven't even watched the Potomac premiere yet because I've been just trying to to keep up. But I did watch Salt Lake and Beverly Hills this morning. Um, so they said that there are no new housewife shows coming. Uh, Family Karma has been put on pause. Shaw's of Sunset we know has been on pause, which I'm kind of like, what are, we, what are we doing here, Bravo? Like, I thought we were adding more like diversity to the lineup. I like the exposure to other cultures. Love the Persian culture, love the Indian culture, enjoyed family karma, enjoyed Shots of Sunset. Interesting that they brought Reza and Gigi and MJ to BravoCon, but yet there was no announcement about Shots of Sunset and whether or not something was going to come or something was not going to come. Whatever. Um, I did just film a show with Reza and Gigi a few weeks ago that you can look forward to coming in the new year. Um, I mean, I guess I'm not really, they were in it and I was there and I got to like see them and catch up. But, um, but so they're not off of our television screens, but you'll, you'll see come coming in the new year. But what else? What else? What else? I mean, nothing else all that interesting it says that they're planning more local events, like more like pop-up events and different watch what happens live tapings in different cities. Like they do the LA one. Um, so, I mean, I think that's kind of fun to bring BravoCon 
like in a smaller level in more like local places. I think that's what, listen, I love when I get to do my live shows and I get to go to different cities and collaborate with different content creators in those cities and collaborate with different talent and all of that stuff that's local to those cities. That's always a good time for me. So I enjoy it. I'm here for it. But yeah, but the meat of it was what she said about Bethany Frankel. Because uh, she revealed that Bethany Frankel pitched not one, because remember we heard, oh, Bethany pitched a show to Bravo and they turned him down. Then Bethany's like, that's not true. I pitched a show. Yes. And the network that I pitched the show to said that it only made sense on Bravo. So that's why they took that show to Bravo to go and pitch Bravo because it just it made the most amount of sense for the show. But it just happened to be Bravo. Okay. Well, now we're finding out what those shows actually were. So in response to the question, I feel like I'm Maury Povich right now. In response to the question, what do you think generally about the so-called, I love the shade, the so-called, and then they put it in quotation marks, reality reckoning as former Bravo star Bethany Frankel has termed it. Francis said, I think that we have had a mutually beneficial relationship with Bethany. There's an asterisk next to her name. We have stayed in touch, including when she pitched us three shows, and the three shows were all around our Bravo IP. So it sounds like whatever show she was pitching them weren't conveniently, or it wasn't just a coinkadink that those shows were being pitched to Bravo, because they're over here saying that they were centered around the Bravo IP. What else does she say? There was one about a Real Housewives camp that she wanted to run for Real Housewives kids. A Real Housewives. What, she wanted to be Abby Lee Miller? She wanted to be Dance Moms on Bravo? Wasn't she talking about exploiting people, exploiting the kids? Now we want to do a show around the children? And you're going to be what? Abby Lee Miller just like, whoosh. come on. Bethany, come on. Wow, Bethany, wow. That's show ID number one. There was one around her podcast, which is called Rewives, because that's about housewives. Interesting, because she has a podcast called Rewives about housewives. So she wanted to build, it seems like, a talk show around that show. She And then Francis clarifies, but we found that to be too similar to another show that we have on the network. One on every night. The Shade! Because they have Watch What Happens Live. And Watch What Happens Live interviews housewives. And Watch What Happens Live talks about housewife shows. Obviously, this would be a little bit different, but like, come on, who's really going to want to watch Bethany revisit, you know, old housewife shows with Jerry Springer or who else does she have on? It was just, she has like great names that come on the show, but then it's like, you're having them recap a single random episode of a housewife show from what? Like what? No, no wonder they threw that show in the garbage with the sprinkle cookies. And then the third show and the other one was a spinoff of a cast that she wanted to recommend for the housewives in another town. Interesting. A spinoff of a cast she wanted to recommend for the housewives in another town, which obviously they're not interested in doing because they're not doing any more. Um, they're not doing any more housewife shows. So I just love, and and let's not forget the one that Bethany revealed on her number one podcast in the whole galaxy with, with Nini. Remember when she had Nini on the show? And then she was like, we should do a show called Ebony and Ivory, where, you know, you take me to different parts where, you know, your culture was, and I'll take you to the Hamptons. Because, you know, your culture is like, ugh, she's weird. Housewives of Connecticut, right? I mean, it's just... Bethany just wants to be Andy. That's probably why she has such a bone to pick with Andy Kitch Kitchsey. I think, you know, she's clearly got something going on against him. <sighs> so happy Thursday, everybody. I'm glad that Bethany's getting the shade she deserved. But here's the thing. These are three different shows that are centered, as, as said in the interview, centered around the Bravo IP. So how would you expect another network? Because she was like, I was just pitching it to a production company. And that production company thought that Bravo would have been the best fit. Guess what? Ding dong. What do you think? VH1 is going to want to produce a show about Bravo kids? Like, come on. Hello? Is anybody home? Knock, knock. Cuckoo bird. I just don't get it. Like, what does she think? We're all stupid? We're all what? Well, actually, some people are stupid. So many people come into my comments sometimes. They're like, team Bethany, team, you're just jealous of Bethany Frankel. I'm like, what am I jealous of? 
She's eating crab legs in a hotel room. What am I jealous of? Paul looks like he never wants to be around her, her fiance. He like never wants to be on her cameras or her videos. Like what? Like at this point, at one point I did look up to Bethany. I used to buy her books. I used to buy Skinny Girl Margarita. And now I'm just like, I have zero interest in anything you have to shuck, by the way. Which by the way, I will say this. She has this new, or it's not hers. It's a, a beverage that she invested in. Yeah, see, somebody just brought it up. Yeah, she invested in a sugar-free cocktail. I guess she's Einstein. Oh, oh, sorry. Well, actually, to be fair, it's not sugar free. Skinny Girl does have sugar in it, but she also invested in a a new drink. I think it's called Mingle. It's not Bethany's, but it's, I guess, it's owned by an. It's another independent uh, women woman owned company, and the branding is really cute. Why, right? And Bethany's, you know, shocking, uh, shocking it, shock, schlecking it. What's the what's the word I'm thinking of? Um, she's trying to sell it on her Instagram uh, account. And she's like, look at coming by this, this mocktail, which first of all, Margaret Joseph's already did a mocktail. Thank you very much. It's called soiree. And second of all, it didn't even taste that good. Mingle. I tried it. I saw it at Whole Foods the other day and I was like, you know what? Let me actually give it a try. Gave it a try. Didn't love it. I was like, God, she's not doing it. What happened to her forever, forever young wines that didn't go anywhere. Schlep. Yes, that's what I, that's what I was looking for, Marie. Thank you. Schlep. Shelp. Shelp. Yeah. Schlep. Yeah, schlepping. Maria spelled it wrong. Marie spelled it wrong. Um, but yeah. So there we go. There we go. Bethany. Bye, Bethany. Bye. Okay, let's move on to Heather Gay, because this is actually kind of interesting. Heather Gay and Monica Garcia. Monica's the newbie on, on Real Houses of Salt Lake City this season. They're now suing each other. What? Why? Well, because Beauty Lab and Laser is claiming that Monica didn't pay her tab. She got some services at Beauty Lab and Laser, and she said, peace, I ain't gonna pay, bitch. And then Heather Gay and Beauty Lab and Laser said, nah, bitch better have my money. Pay me what you owe me. Well, now Monica is countersuing, saying that her injections were botched, which... It's not how it works, Monica, okay? Because here's the thing. As somebody that has gotten injections, I get Botox and I've gotten under eye filler. Um, and I will say this. When you, sorry, my Invisalign is like, sorry if there's like a little bit of a lisp, guys. My kind of nearing the end of my Invisalign journey soon. So you won't have to hear that plasticky lisp in my mouth, mouth moving forward for much longer. But um, Monica is countersuing Beauty Lab and Laser because she says that they didn't do a good job or she didn't like what they did, right? According to The Sun, Monica paid the $400 deposit and a $49 upfront filing fee. She now claims that the, that the filler, the injections, were negligently given and didn't have the intended or promised results that she was hoping for. But here's the thing, sweetie. One, filler can be dissolved. Botox is something that that cannot be reversed, but it does go away. You Botox usually lasts about three months. I mean, for some people, like I usually get my Botox or my, I don't do Botox. I get Juvo by Evelis, which is like a different type of, there are different types of quote unquote Botox. It's the neurotoxin that, that you know, numbs or paralyzes the muscles. That way it's like smooth, right? Different versions of it. I personally like Juvo by Evelis getting mine touched up next week, actually for my bourbon room show. That said, um, that lasts a few months, but it does go away. It's so like right now I have to go get it touched up because now you can see somebody told me the other day, you need to get your Botox touched up because look at now my face can move. Boom, boom. But with filler, filler is actually something you don't have to wait it up. Filler typically lasts a little longer. I think filler usually lasts between like six months to like up to a year. Filler can be dissolved. If you don't like the filler, they can put injections in that dissolves the filler in your face. Filler is more of just to fill in. That's why I get filler under my eyes so that I don't have like those bags under my eyes. Or some people get like their cheekbones filled to have like bigger cheekbones. My cheekbones are already naturally pretty popping. Um, some people get jaw filler to give them a more defined jawline. Some people get lip filler because it makes their lips more plump. But regardless, filler can be dissolved right? It's not a pleasant experience, but it can be dissolved. 
Bonica says that she paid someone that was more competent to fix it. The beauty lab said, well, we actually offered to make it up to her and to correct it, right? Because they can dissolve it. They can add it. They can kind of touch it up. Or if it's a little uneven, usually you come in for like a two week follow up to see like, okay, how did it settle? Is it nice? Do we need to add a little bit more? Do we need to refine it in any way? There's usually a follow up process to make sure that the results that you want are the desired results, right? They try to make sure you're happy with it. That said, anytime you go in for injections, I mean, anytime you go in for any sort of medical procedure, cosmetic or not, you have to sign a waiver. So when you get injections, you sign a waiver saying, hey, I understand that there are consequences of putting injectables into my face, number one. And number two, I also understand that I may not love the results, but I'm taking that risk regardless. It's unfortunate, but it's how these places protect their business. So in this case, I would assume Monica signed a waiver and that's why Beauty Lab is suing her for not paying her tab. And to go to someone more competent to fix it, like why did you go to Beauty Lab and Laser to begin with? So Monica is now suing for consequential damages. The damages are capped at 50,000. It's unlikely that she's gonna get anything close to that, but she's suing for, I don't know what damages she thinks she's gonna get, like what damages I mean, aside from maybe covering the tab of her going somewhere else, but again, she signed a waiver. She was entitled to pay her money. She never paid her money. So get this now, because I guess in addition to the upfront payments that she had to make, like the down payment, she agreed to make monthly payments to pay off her tab, right? To pay for her lip or no, she got a nose injection and, and I think it was lips. I think it was nose and lips because some people, the thing now is to get, um, filler in your nose, which is like a non-surgical nose job, which I've actually, my friend Evan just got it done and I'm considering getting it done because I'm like, hmm, that might be interesting just to have a little fun with it. I always get Botox in my nose on the bunny lines because I feel like when you do that, it just like cinches your nose and like contours it and it's just, it's a good vibe. It's a good time, um, which I need to get mine touched up. But anyway, She's likely not, Monica's likely not going to see anything close to that 50K, but Beauty Lab is suing Monica for a tab of dun, 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 $2,000. That's it. Literally $2,000. Monica claims that this whole lawsuit is really just Heather's way of holding a grudge against her and like wanting to, you know, just stick it to her because she has an issue with her, which I think is kind of funny. I mean, it's literally two grand, like pay your two grand pay your two grand. It's really not that big of a deal. But also at the same time, you know, it's like, are we really going to sue over two grand? Like it's beauty lab and laser. They're claiming that their business was so hurt, but at the same time, oh my God, what is going on in the live chat? The self absorb Beck is too busy talking about himself to check the chat. Oh my gosh, what is happening? Um, all right, well, let's kick this homie out. All right, he's just been banned, guys. Why are people doing And then you come in here, drop in the N-word? Like, what is happening? What is going on? Why are there so many people? Rebecca, oh my God. What is happening? Yeah, she's calling me. Um, Jesus. Hold on, guys. Sorry, sorry, sorry. What is going on? Why are these bots that are coming in the live chat right now? Is it Adam JKJK? JK? Oh, something. There are literally bots that just came into the live chat right now. And they're, holy shit. Sorry, guys. I'm trying to, to block all of them as they're coming in. Who is sending bots after me? Little, what the fuck is happening right now? Oh my God. Bots don't say this. Bots do say, they're all coming in and typing the exact same thing. Just block and move on. They keep coming in. I'm so sorry, guys. I don't know what's going on. Jesus. It's <laughs> um okay, I don't know. This is clearly a bot attack. I'm sorry guys. 
the, it's multiple accounts that are coming in typing the N word into the live chat. All right. It is what it is. Hold on one sec, guys. Um, yes, they want a reaction. It is what it is. Okay, let's move on. Okay, so we talked about Bethany. We talked about this lawsuit with Heather Gay and Monica, which I think is kind of frivolous and silly. But let's talk about the um, let's talk about the husband. No, not the husband. Let's talk about should we talk about Beverly Hills or something? Well, I guess we're already on the topic of Salt Lake City. So let's recap Salt Lake because this episode I thought was hilarious between Lisa Barlow and Monica fighting at the sound bath. Everything, all the other stuff was kind of like meh. We had a really cute moment. Um, we had a really cute moment with um shoot who am i thinking of the was angie k and monica or angie k there was an early sorry guys i got a little distracted um but anyway i thought this week's episode of salt lake city was actually pretty good i'm sad that i didn't get to recap it live last night because i have so many opinions of it i think the meat of it though is the angie versus um, or not Angie, but the the Lisa Barlow versus Monica and Angie kind of just being stuck in the middle of it all. That to me was kind of hilarious because they're literally at a sound bath. W also, when did Whitney get a jewelry line? Didn't she have like a skincare line that she launched last year? And now there's a jewelry line with chakra healing in it. I'm just like, how did we like what happened to that? Remember, she was like, I'm putting all of my savings into this business. And if it goes under, then like I'm losing all of my money. And then we move on, and now it's like, surprise, we're no longer doing this. Now we're doing this other thing, which to me is just kind of hilarious. I'm just like, really? These housewives. This is why I do get Bethany when she was just like, you know, fake businesses, and these housewives come on just to shell their products and to actually, you know, not have legitimate businesses. Remember, she was making fun of Ramona and Ramona and her her skincare line that she thought was fake because Ramona was always holding it in all the scenes. And Bethany's like, what are you doing, Ramona? That's stupid. Here's my skinny girl margarita, though. I'm going to give everybody skinny girl margaritas and we're going to go on a trip to taste tequila in Mexico, which, by the way, let's be honest, there was no like real tequila tasting that she was doing with her skinny girl margarita. Like that whole thing was so silly and so staged. So, yeah, I kind of agree with Bethany in the fake business. I like Whitney. I do like Whitney, but I feel like some of her storylines are just a little per performative, silly. I don't know. It's literally hilarious to me, to be honest with you. But um, yeah, so I think Angie K, because Lisa Barlow seemed to have an issue with Angie kind of trying to, to be a mediator or kind of sit somewhere in the middle. And for me, I'm just like, you know what? Listen, okay. I get Lisa Barlow kind of being upset. Well, I also, I get Lisa thinking that Angie's a bit of a hypocrite because Angie's over here fighting with Monica and Monica's over here, like bringing up the rumors about her husband being gay, which listen, if they have an arrangement, if he's gay, whatever, we love everybody, right? As you can tell in the live chat, we love, the, we love the gays, all about the gays, right? We're going to just wave that big rainbow flag and support all the ruthless and the toothless and the gays, right? Oh, because Jen Shaw, remember Jen Shaw was helping all the, 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 uh, the youth, the LGBT youth, and Jen was saving the world. And now we don't have a savior in Utah anymore, but at least now we have Monica, you know, saying that she loves all the husbands and we have Angie K and her husband representing. But I get it that Lisa Barlow's like, listen, she's a bit of a hypocrite because like how are you so close to monica and now you're trying to be friends with monica considering she never really came at monica right she remember she keeps trying to come at meredith about the rumors and she's like this is all meredith folks meredith wants to take down my family but then on the flip side meredith trying to take down her family is not a real thing like that's a narrative that we've created but i feel like meredith never really threatened she's just like listen there are rumors that are out there about your husband you don't see me talking about it i could if i wanted to but i'm not but it's out there. Like these rumors are being said. You don't see me bringing it up on camera though. Monica brought it up on camera. So I understand Lisa Barlow's frustration. I do think Lisa Barlow is making Whitney's bet a lot about, about Lisa, but that's just what Lisa Barlow does. And that's what we love about Lisa Barlow. But if I had to choose a side, I think, I mean, I don't, I understand Lisa Barlow 
judging Monica for the way that she treated her mother and being like, listen, I would never talk to my mother like that. I get it. But also she doesn't know the history and she doesn't know the extent. I think it wasn't as big of a deal as Whitney. Again, Whitney keeps stirring the pot as Whitney made it out to be because Whitney went and told Heather and then Heather goes and Heather tells Monica and it just like becomes a bigger thing than it needs to be all because Whitney here again is stirring the pot and creating some drama. And I'm just like, Whitney Rose, Girlfriend, like, you can't be mad if they're fighting at your prism event because you stirred up the pot. You caused the drama and then invited them both to your party. Great promotion for prism, though, right? Because, like, we got so much visibility at that. Like, most of the episode was Monica and Lisa going back and forth. And them, like, and their little high school tit for tat, I thought was hilarious while Whitney's trying to make her speech and while we have the sound about that. I'm like, listen, Whitney, I get it. It's your event and it sucks that they did this at your event, but. If anything, the event would have been boring if it weren't for this. And we're living for this, like, little iconic petty fight that the two of them had. I thought it was hilarious. I almost want to lean more towards Monica. um, Just because I get it. Like, you don't know my life. You don't know my relationship with my mother. So for you to come in here and judge me, I get it. You're judging my actions and how I treated my mother. But just know that the re- I'm treating my mother a certain way because there's a history between us. And you don't understand that history. So you shouldn't comment on my relationship with my mother if you don't understand the history. I get Lisa just making an observation based off what, what she's seen and what she's heard. But like, it's not that deep, ladies. And I feel like Lisa kept trying to say that. She's like, it's not that deep. This is not an issue. I'm not trying to fight with you, Monica. And Angie K, I get her kind of trying to be in the middle just to mediate everything, but it was just, I, I found the whole thing hilarious. And it was kind of the fun, petty drama that's not super deep, that's not toxic and dark. It was funny, and I was living for it. Fast forward, then we get to Beverly Hills. Beverly Hills, also a great episode. I know people were talking about how without Lisa Rinna, the season was going to be boring, but I'm not going to lie. The season's not boring. It's actually pretty interesting. I'm thoroughly enjoying this season going to magic. This is what episode three now going to the magic mic show. First of all, I was like, put me up on stage and get some whipped cream all up on it. All up on it. All up on it. But Sutton freaking out. Cause that's kind of the meat of the Beverly Hills episode was Sutton really freaking out. It was that. And then there was Garcelle's conversation with the ladies at the end of the episode, but we'll focus on Sutton first. I'm with Kyle and the producers. I think Sutton was upset that she wasn't initially chosen. And then she was a little like, how do you think Sutton would have reacted if they would have like flipped her leg? Could you imagine Sutton's little legs being like flipped open on stage? I think she was upset that she wasn't chosen. That's really the bottom. Cause she even said when she said, I guess I wore my pants for nothing while they're on, while Erica spread Eagle on the stage. That's when I was like, okay, come on. Come on, Sutton. Like, let's call, like, let's call a spade a spade. Let's just acknowledge what it is. You were a little bothered by it. You did throw a bit of a hissy fit. They showed it in the teaser, but they didn't show it in the episode where she's like, take my mic off. Obviously, we know that her mic was taken off because by the time she gets to the bathroom, her mic wasn't on and all the audio we're really getting from Sutton is from Garcelle's mic. I felt bad for Garcelle because Garcelle's like, I'm trying to do you a solid, but like, you're literally being crazy right now. Like, You're being so, like, unnecessary. And then literally half the party goes and leaves to go tend to Sutton because she's throwing her tantrum. And so I understand why the Magic Mike guys were upset about that. Because, listen, at the end of the day, they're putting on a show. They're trying to, you know, they literally cleared the front row for these ladies. I mean, I'm sure this was all planned in advance because in order for production to, like, film there like there needed to be you know certain logistical pieces that needed to be preset so i'm sure erica as soon as you know they found out that the vegas trip and again they plan these trips a lot further in advance than it looks like on the show because they have to get clearances they have to make sure there's travel for everybody like it's a lot of work planning these trips so i'm pretty sure that was all cleared in advance but at the same time it's like come on you don't want to have a show where you have a featured front row and then most of the people in that featured front row aren't there for the actual show. It also looks bad, right? It looks like people didn't buy tickets if you don't know who they actually are. So I thought Sutton throwing her hissy fit was a little dramatic. I also found it interesting that she carries bottles of grapefruit juice around after Teddy outed her for carrying vodka in her purse all the time. I was like, Listen, when I was in college, I remember having bottles of ocean spray and taking those into class. 
I was having a good time in college. I will say it wasn't just ocean spray in the bottles, though. I mean, but listen, it is what it is. Sutton is making the show. Sutton made this episode. You got to give Sutton MVP of the episode because she definitely made it interesting. And her fighting with Kyle and calling her a bitch. And then Kyle's like, no, you're being a bitch, bitch. Great. Comic. Like, these fights are good fights. These are fun fights. These are, you know, petty, stupid, silly drama. I don't think that Sutton's worried about her reputation because then we get the scenes later where she's, like, in bed and she's talking about vibrators and how you can rub your clitoris off and all of that stuff. And I'm just like, okay, Sutton, we're not as prudish as we want to give off. I do love that they were playing that um, Serena King game, um, Let's Fucking Play. It's a card game. I literally have it on my bar up here. It's a card game, and there are these spicy questions, and you have to ask them. And it's actually a fun game, but it's very naughty. So I was surprised that they were playing that at the table and that Sutton was answering, Garcelle was answering. I was like, ooh. And it's always the prunes that are the most, you know, freaky deaky. I can be a little freaky deaky sometimes. I, I like to have my fun. Um, but Sutton was dramatic. Definitely made the episode interesting, though. But she ruined the magic mic night. I'm looking forward to seeing next week's episode where Erica is like, oh, Sutton, here are my friends. Now's your opportunity to apologize. I do think Sutton should apologize because I think Dorit was right. Like, it's not very Miss Manners to leave the show. And then when the rest of the party leaves with you, you know, to kind of cause a scene and to pull everybody out of the show. And I know she's like, well, I didn't ask anybody to leave. I just left on my own. But it's like you left in a big huff. You were, you know, screaming about taking your mic off, like you caused a scene and people are going to react to the scene and your friends are going to want to go and check on you. They're not going to leave you out in the hallway crying. I know she's like, it's fine. Just leave me. They're not going to do that. And you know that they're not going to do that. So let's not even be dramatic about it. So there was that. And then there was the, the final scene with Garcelle and her opening up about her kids. And I have to say, you're going to get mad at me. I'm team Dorit on this one because Garcelle's like, listen, I wanted to open up about my kids, but I don't trust you guys around my kids. And then Dorit's like, well, that's hurtful because what do you mean you don't trust me around your kids? Which, to be fair, she did lump Dorit into that. And to be fair, the night that Erica cursed out Jax, Dorit said, or Dorit like, was the one that was telling Erica, like, you cannot t curse him out. Like, she was trying to defuse the situation and protect Jax. And then afterwards, when Kyle and Mauricio were laughing about it, I mean, here's the thing, though, though, guys, it's not that deep. Like, come on. I mean, I guess I'm just used to like my mom and her friends growing up. Like, they would talk shit on the kids. Not it wouldn't. It wasn't mean, but like, they're like, oh my god, these fucking kids are brats or whatever. Like, you just you have mommy talk. And so I just think when Kyle and Mauricio were having that conversation with Dorit and PK, and Mauricio's like, I love that she told the kid to fuck off because, like, you know, I just. I guess growing up, it wasn't that deep. You know, the adults are like, oh my God, kids make me want to pull. I joke about my dogs like that all the time. You know, I call them my demon children. You know, it doesn't mean anything and it's not that deep. You know, Josh calls them the demon children too. It took him a while to like embrace that they're demons, which by the way, Sky's getting fixed today. <sighs> He's getting his balls chopped off as we speak. And I'm so happy. I love this healing journey for him. And for me, Sully will be next. I can't wait. Um, but yeah, I didn't think it was that deep. And I don't think they meant it maliciously, right? They were just joking about it. And they felt bad. And they took accountability. And they apologized for it. As did Erica. Erica's, Erica's like, I was drunk. And I was being stupid. But what I did was wrong. And it was completely unacceptable. Like, everybody took genuine accountability. And it seemed like we were ready and willing to move on. But I understand Dorit being like, listen, it's been a year like one why do you not trust me around your children and two it's been a year and it's one thing for you to open up to us about being a mother right it's another thing to like let's say i don't trust my children around you fine then don't bring your kids around erica because she told Jax to get the fuck out of here which i don't think she meant it in like a confrontational get the fuck out of here kid i'm gonna fight you way she meant as like children be gone it's adult time she said she meant it like that. If you rewatch it, she didn't mean it maliciously. Like, let's not be. I know everybody likes to get their pitchforks out and pick sides on all of this stuff. But like, come on. It wasn't that deep at the end of the day. If my mom's friends told me to fuck off, I would probably say fuck off right back now. But as a kid, I probably would not take it that deep. And it didn't seem like Jax took it that deep. If you rewatch that episode, Jax was not that bothered by it. So I think at some point, Garcelle needs to let the mouse go or be willing to move forward. Right. If. This happened over a year ago and you got an apology over a year ago. And then you just got another apology from Kyle with Eagle Woman. 
Featherhead. What the fuck was her name? I don't know. But anyway, like at what point when somebody says, I'm sorry, can we move on? At what point do you really take steps to move on? Because I think her talking about her kids with these other women would be her relating to them mother to mother. They can relate to you and, and have a conversation with you and probably share some of the same experiences that you've had as mothers. It's not specific to your children. So I don't know. Somebody call back Eagle Woman. <sighs> Is Jax the one that said that Garcelle needs to parent him? Doesn't need to parent him anymore. Yes, Jax is the one that that said that. So, um, so yeah, MTF Phoenix says, Zach, can I just quote Sutton and say in that white t-shirt, I love your triceps. Oh, thank you. Everyone loves my my uh, shirt today. It's a new kids on the block shirt. I got it at BlockCon when I hosted at BlockCon. Oh, and you like my triceps. What are your triceps? These are biceps, right? This is a bicep. But what is a tricep? Is the tricep like up here? Is it the back one? Sorry, now I'm just flexing for the camera. Up in the wow, my arms actually look like wow. Look at that, getting a little more butch. Look at that. Mm, I'm beat up in the gym. Just I don't know what a tricep is though. That's how gym illiterate I am. But I can tear shit up at the gym. Come for me. Okay. Oh man. Well, that th those is my thoughts about Salt Lake City, Beverly Hills. The Heather Gay lawsuit, the um, you have to stretch your arm and turn to see the tricep. Oh, the tricep is back here, right? That was funny. Said Sutton's dating journey is actually funny this season. I'm I'm thoroughly enjoying it. All right, guys, don't forget to get your tickets to my live show at the Bourbon Room, November 19th. We're gonna kick things off with a tea spilling session with Ryan Bailey, Donna Bowling from Daily Dose of Donna, and the Brav Bros. Then we're gonna get into our dinner party from hell, where I'm bringing my boys, Evan, Stephen, Jeff, Josh, Zachary, Zachary Reality. They're gonna do. A, we're gonna do a dinner party from hell on stage with some party games and then boom we'll kick it off with some very special guests get your tickets at nofilterlive.com it's november 19th at the bourbon room in hollywood nofilterlive.com all right guys i love you i appreciate you you can follow me at just plain zach all over the internet follow no filter with zach for all the latest details and tea from the podcast at no filter with zach and yeah stay tuned i'll be live again tonight this thursday for our members only live stream which will be available for members of no filter plus on apple podcasts on friday morning so get ready freddie oh say no to bots yeah say no to bots i'm gonna have diana jenkins investigate the bots that came into the live chat today all right love you mean it bye guys